Epilepsy warning! This video has flashing lights. I want to show you how I just did all that. I'm Addy and welcome to Analog Dreams. One of the topics I want to cover on this channel is glitch art. I do a lot of my own analog and digital glitch art. It's, it's one of my biggest passions when it comes to art and creative work. And I want to share that process with you. I have a bunch of videos coming on it, but this video in particular is actually an excerpt from a video uploaded to my main Epos Vox YouTube channel, which is all about streaming and OBS and things like that. But it shows you how you can make glitch art effects or glitch art style effects, video synthesis style effects in OBS Studio live in real time, either to stream or just to record and have a lot of fun with it. And I wanted to share it here with you. This is kind of framed as a plug-in showcase. So if there's anything you don't understand about OBS or what's going on here, head on over to my main channel. I have tons of videos to help you out. I love quite a few things. Glitch art, playing with streaming software, and making cool stuff. And that is what today's video is all about. Instead of just focusing on one plugin for a typical walkthrough like we've been through and doing, we're focusing on like three or four plugins. So first and foremost, the plugins that this video relies on are the recursion effect filter from the wonderful Exeldro. It actually just got an update in this January. We're looking at the OBS shader filter plugin, which allows you to do an amazing amount of stuff uh, from the developer CERN. But then we're also looking at NVIDIA Broadcast or the OBS Virtual Cam Filter plugin that we checked out in the previous video. Go check out the link in the description for that one. I'm going to be using NVIDIA Broadcast because my camera is run through a capture card, the Elgato Cam Link Pro, which allows me to access it in multiple apps at the same time, which means I can still have the normal webcam in tutorial mode with my background and checked and everything like that here in normal OBS, but I can also have the webcam added through NVIDIA Broadcast for background removal without issue. If you don't have a capture card or webcam that supports multi-app, then you will need the OBS uh, virtual cam filter to send it out and check out that whole video for the explanation. So OBS Studio is super powerful, especially with all the filters and plugins and everything available to you, which means you can start doing some really wacky effects, be it that you're doing a concert and you want to do some crazy effects to show on stage, or you're doing something like the Sushi Dragon, who does all these crazy effects in real time. A lot of them were done in OBS before he switched to more like higher end setups. If you wanna do these crazy effects on your stream, but you don't want them to be on all the time. For example, you know, if I'm doing a stream, most of my stream is gonna be talking like this with my normal camera view, like I built up a studio for a reason, but I still wanna be able to do cool stuff by routing it through, you know, NVIDIA broadcast and doing all of this, it allows you to kind of have it toggleable so you can have these effects when you want them and only when you want them. And that is super powerful and very exciting. So I'm stoked to show you. So once you have all these things installed, we're ready to start cracking at OBS here. Now here's my traditional scene. This is what I use for what you're seeing right now. This is what I use for, you know, my tutorials. I've got a desktop capture scene going. I've got all sorts of awesome stuff here, but I also have the webcam added in NVIDIA broadcast. If I open up NVIDIA broadcast, you can see here I have the camera added. Now I only have it in 1080p 30 mode because 4k could be kind of intense but you can add any number of effects such as background blur background replacement background removal you can even add the auto frame stuff where it'll start tracking your face it's honestly not the best implementation now that i've played with the obsbot webcams but it does the job uh and you can actually chain multiple effects at the same time you can even do noise removal which we don't need here because we're using a nice camera so i'm going to use background removal which is going to give me basically a faux green screen. This will obviously look a little bit better with an actual green screen. And NVIDIA have actually uh, trained the AI to keep the chair backs in the NVIDIA broadcast feed because it looks a little more natural. So I'm going to like scoot forward a little bit. So it's mostly focused on me and not the chair back. Uh, I guess I could go grab a stool if I needed to, but you get the point for this video. It's fine, but we can also stack an effect. So for example, I could sit here and do auto frame as well. And then as I move around, it kind of follows me around. I'm not as big of a fan of that, so we're going to remove it. We're just going to focus on this. So then we add it to OBS. I have a whole scene here, which has all of the effects. We're basically going to start from scratch, although I'm going to reference this one. 
So you add a video capture device and select the camera NVIDIA broadcast option. If you are not able to add your camera directly to NVIDIA broadcast, then you would just add your camera like I have here in this scene, add a filter, and then add the virtual camera filter. Click OK, and then we come in here to NVIDIA broadcast, and I can choose the OBS virtual camera filter as a source. Now, my OBS is frozen. This plugin still seems broken on the newest version. That is unfortunate. I'm going to report that to Excelldro. BRB. Also, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card or can't use NVIDIA Broadcast, there are a few plugins available to remove your background virtually still. Again, a green screen will be best, uh, but I'll have some plugin videos linked in the description below as well. Let's proceed. So we have our scene with our alpha transparency background removed here. This is all fine and dandy, but we don't have any cool effects. Well, first and foremost, we're going to start managing some filters. We're going to click filters, and you can see here I have a bunch set up. Now, the first and foremost, like the main one we're focusing on today, is the plugin for the recursion effect. This creates the like video feedback kind of loop, like I do with my CRT setup and things like that, where you have duplicates of yourself doing all sorts of weird stuff. And this, if I move this out of the way, is already a pretty trippy effect. You can get some wild stuff going on, and you can do all sorts of awesome stuff with this alone which is already pretty powerful. So you can change the delay at which point the the repeats of yourself like are delayed in your actions. So for example, if I just crank this up, now if I move my hand, you can see here we get some real kind of watery vibes as each delayed copy is slower than the first. I prefer it to be pretty quick, uh, personally, but you can get some cool stuff going regardless. Actually, I'll turn it up a little bit more. We get a little bit of a delay. Then you have the offset for the X and Y axis. This is the spacing from you out towards the rest of the screen. So Y is vertical, X is horizontal, of course, and it is set up kind of like Photoshop to where the higher the number is actually going down, the lower the number is going up, and you do go into the negative ranges, and same thing, the lower the number is actually further away from you. So now we got a real big trail of recursive copies of myself. That's all recursion, the word actually means is just repeat copies happening over and over. It's Mostly a mathematics term, but it works here as well. Then, of course, you have the scale, which is basically the size of the source in relation to where you are in the space. So if I turn it up, it gets closer to my size, um, which means it's not going to be, you know, I still have the trail of me, but it's all centered around myself. But if I, you know, turn up or down the sides for X, I can send it horizontally either to my left or to my right based on positive and negative values. Or same thing for Y, I can send it up or down if I like as well. And then, of course, you have rotation. You can adjust the rotation curve so it rotates in different directions and you can inverse the, the effect so that the centermost frame you're actually at the back of the chain instead of the front of the chain uh the front makes sense most of the time but you can do it either way you want you can get some crazy loops going on here if you adjust all the different axes for example if i crank up the offset y then i can just basically get me spinning into a spiral here which is pretty trippy so this is the core effect like i originally set out to show you with this video is I can do all this kinds of crazy madness and create some wacky stuff and you can kind of almost get like kaleidoscopy, which is pretty cool. But that alone doesn't really give you full creative potential. We're going to show you how to do it even weirder because then we can start combining it with other effects. Now, most of these are just going to be the user defined shader plugin I showed you before on the on the OBS project page that comes with a bajillion different baked in shaders that you can use. So, for example, this one is the VHS shader which I have applied to myself because otherwise it loses the alpha transparency. Of course, the order of your effects matter in that the topmost effect filter is applied last, the bottommost is applied first. So here we have the VHS filter applied at the below the recursion effect. So all of the different copies are based on my existing one, which has this crazy VHS filter applied. However, if I put it above the recursion filter, then it applies the VHS effect to the entire recursion thing, which ends up losing the extra recursion effect. So generally speaking, you want the recursion effect at the top of the chain for most of what you're doing here. However, keep in mind with a lot of these shader filters, you have to check either apply to alpha or apply to image or you lose your background. We're obviously not seeing a background right now, so I'm just going to add a color source to kind of express this. So this will be our background for the moment. You can see here right now with the recursion, we still get the background behind us. But if I turn on that VHS effect, we lose our background. So we have to hit apply to image, which unfortunately for this effect, it takes it from something cool to something still kind of cool, but nowhere near what I want. I would love pinging Excelldro or whoever actually works on these shaders. He's worked on some shaders for me. I would love for these to be able to be applied 
with alpha as well. Not all of them are set up for alpha, but pretty cool regardless. Get some trippy effects going. Another shader I was looking at is this uh, analog. No, this is the zoom blur shader. So I'm going to push this down here. And basically it just adds basically like a pulse that has a zoom blur, you know, like they would use in movies and things like that. And I just use it for a little bit of like a glitchy flicker. Then we have an emboss effect, which gives us a lovely little kind of outline kind of stencil look. And you can actually apply color to it to keep your color intact. So that with the recursion filter is kind of cool on its own. But then if we combine it with, say, the VHS filter, that one doesn't look as good. Um, or like some glitchy filters, then we get some really trippy results. And this is where my mind starts getting exploded because all the stuff I've been doing with glitch art and like my, my glitch synth stuff that I, uh, I've been working with, I can basically do the, you know, obviously it's not the same thing as actual analog VFX work, but like I can do so many of these cool effects in digital form to bring it to the live stream format as well. And for me, the appeal of the glitch art stuff that I'm doing is the blend of the analog and the digital realms. And so this is where my mind starts to get absolutely blown. So here I am using the glitch analog shader. So when you click browse, there's a massive folder here of shaders and you can build your own based on stuff from like the shader repository website and things like that to do cool stuff. Not all of these will work on people. Some of them are generators rather than effects and whatever. Um, but this one's the analog one and it has a bunch of sliders for developing these like modulation lines and things like that. And this is where things start getting really cool. So we've got the outlines going. We've got the analog glitch. I can now do a rainbow overlay here, um, which just adds that little like extra color cycle. We can actually probably add that below. No, on above. I've got a color grading one, which just kind of brightens me up because some of these effects make me really, really dark. So this one just has the shadows pumped up a little bit and the saturation tweaked with. And now we got some cool, real glitchy stuff going on here. Whoa, dude. I think NVIDIA Broadcast is having a hard time because it wasn't doing this before with the background. But then we've got other shaders for like, here, I'll turn off the glitch and the outlines for a sec. I just realized this one's not doing anything now. Some of these effects, once you stack up enough shaders, some of them start to glitch out like you may have no here we go there's the rainbow effect turn on color grading below yeah there we go now we're talking uh you may have noticed with the backing track stream that we do where i have the visualizer going and stuff like that it's been going for enough hours that the vhs shader which if i turn on here uh, you can see it's like this animated thing whereas on the backing track stream it's just like stuck in one place until I reboot the PC. It's like once the GPU has had enough, it just kind of can't do it anymore. There's also this one called Drunk, which does this crazy little pulsing thing, which I absolutely love because you can change the glow percent, the brightness, all of this to get this like spin out effect. And if you apply it below the recursion effect, then each one of these instances also gets re you know recursed and you get, oh, it's so cool. So then you combine that with some of the other stuff, you get some really neat stuff. So just combining these filters to do wild things really starts just like causing all sorts of crazy effects. I've got a pixelization filter here where you can adjust basically the pixel sizes and you know, you can go down to lines or like make it look mostly realistic, but slightly off. I like this like sort of pixely look when combined with all of the other uh, effects, it just starts looking pretty sick. And so you start combining so many of these things and you just get this wild effect. But this is only part of the experience. We have the background to worry about because this plain old color ain't gonna do it for us. And for this, I'm actually reaching outside of OBS. However, you could do the same thing we've done here and apply effects to whatever you know background generator. And actually, I could show you right that right now. I did not plan for this, but I can pull up my glitch art stuff and just give you like one of my existing exports here. So for example, I could use one of these uh, streaming or glitch art loops that I did during one of our live streams here, which already has a ton of distortion and effects applied to it and just use it as our background and start to get really crazy. Uh, but that is, you know, something that I've already built. If you, if you just have like a basic graphic that you want to do your own effects in OBS because you're not building your own glitch arts or whatever, you can get any number of graphics from like stock video sites. And so I can drag on something like this, make sure you set it to loop. And then we can add the shaders to it as well. So then I come down here to filters, user defined shader, and we can do all sorts of wacky stuff with it. So I can come down here. We can start with like the, what do we got? Spotlight shader does some weird funky stuff to it. Actually, that could be cool for something else, not this. But what I, the fun here is just playing around with it and learning. So for example, we can crank up this 
um, this glow effect, and then we can add another one. And remember these stack, and it's top to bottom in terms of visibility. We can come in here, choose another one. I'm going to go on the oh, reliable VHS effect. Use slider units, and we can change how like detailed the noise is. We're going to get like real funky here. But once you start messing with the range, you can really start adjusting how it looks, and the noise intensity really starts making it just look like actual analog noise here versus whatever it looked like before. So you can get super funky with the effects. And now we've got some seizure laden heck right here. But it's freaking awesome. However, I want to make it responsive. I want to make it involved with what we're actually doing here. And for that, I'm using a program on Steam called VZX Player. It's available for free. I have the paid version. This is not sponsored or anything. This is what we're using for the back and track streams. It's not even showing anything right now. Uh, but it's basically just a big fancy music visualizer program. There's weirdly not a lot of these available at the moment. Uh, so then I will pull up my media source and you can have it playing from whatever. I'm just going to use VLC to play our backing track uh, upcoming synth expansion pack, which if you missed the announcement, we have a synth rock expansion pack coming from backing track soon. And it has a ton of different packs if you pay for the paid version uh, with a lot of cool effects and things like that. So we are just showing that off and demoing it. And then I just add a window capture for it. So window capture, obviously this uses GPU power. So take that with what you will, but scale it up, drop it to the background and you can either use it on its own or again, start adding the filters and shaders to it. And there's probably a bunch of other programs for cool shaders like this that we'll mess with in the future, but we've got one like a freaking ASCII art one. Um, my only complaint with that one is it scales the video back down for some reason. So I've got to figure out what to do about that. But like it turns it into ASCII art with like the full characters and everything. Um, of course, then we have to make it bigger again. Actually, it doesn't change size at all. That's interesting. That shader clearly has a weird relationship. Uh, but we could, if you want to fix this, just as a caveat, if you want to fix this kind of thing, we'll call this visualizer. We'll make a new scene for it, add the window capture. OBS tips on the fly here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll add this, scale it up, and then we'll add that scene as a source to our bigger scene here. So we'll add scene source, visualizer, drag it down, and now we'll add the filter to this. User defined shader, SC art, there we go. And now it maintains the original sizing, and we can adjust the, once the visualizer starts playing again. There we go. We can adjust the sizing and the character set and have that going. We need a visualizer that's a little more intense to actually show this off. There we go. Now it looks like we're playing in front of freaking characters generating the art. Which is insane! Like, this is so freaking cool! And we can still add other shaders from there, too. Like, you can just add and... Obviously, all of this stacks GPU usage. You're only gonna get so far. But, like, you can get absolutely insane with this. And then just start dancing to the music! There's no music playing. This is really awkward. You get the idea, though. I know this tutorial is a little different than the usual, but I just wanted to showcase some cool stuff that I've been having fun with and a nice blend of my kind of higher end streaming tech talk along with my more analog glitch art interests that I've been working on. If you want to check those out, patreon.com slash glitch art is the place to go. Uh, would super appreciate your support. We also have a glitch art channel in the discord server if you want to join. Otherwise, let me know what you come up with. Link me some examples. Tag me on Twitter. I want to see the crazy stuff you all make because really the more streams I see with this kind of wackiness, uh, the, the better I think Twitch is, or YouTube, or what have you. And I'm having a lot of fun with it.